I could poke a hole through here if oh. <laughs> I didn't want to do that, but. That What's happening, work? sports fans? Welcome back to another episode of Mom and Papa Joe. Today on the menu are spare ribs. We've got a giant rack of uh, St. Louis spare ribs. We're going to be putting them on a cannon offset smoker, and they're going to be banging. Let's get into it. First thing we want to do is to make just a little salt and pepper rub. Very simple. We're going to be using a combination of two seasonings today. One of them is just my salt and pepper. Here I've got 16 less cracked pepper, Fiesta. Uh, very flavorful. I'm going to go with two tablespoons and then just kosher salt. The same two tablespoons. And then our second rub is going to be the body of complete seasoning. Flavorful, very low salt. That's where the salt here is going to come into play. Lots of herb, man, this adds such an uh, umami quality to anything you put it on. So here's this giant rack of spare ribs I talked about, man. It weighed in at almost nine and a half pounds uh, when it was a full rack. We trimmed this rack of spare ribs live on Facebook. I'm gonna place the link in the description if you wanna see a, an awesome live trim. But I wanted to cook the largest rack I've ever cooked, St. Louis. Uh, so this is almost eight inches wide and uh, uh, 12 bones long. Folks, look at the beauty, the thickness, all the way from end to end. And I'm also gonna do something a little different. I, uh, I wanna try a little experiment. Lots of you talk about how your ribs are tough when you leave the membrane on. So I removed half the membrane and left the other half on. And we'll compare the two, all coming from the same rack of ribs. All right, we still got some nice moisture on this rack of ribs. So we're not gonna use a binder. Let's come in with our salt and pepper we just put together. Followed by our body of complete seasoning. Very little salt. As a matter of fact, salt is probably listed uh, number four, number five on the ingredient portion of this label. We're gonna flip, same thing on the opposite side. So we're gonna give this a few minutes to sweat in. We'll get cleaned up. And then we're gonna head outside and get that uh, pit fired up. All right, our pit has reached 225. I'm gonna be looking at cooking at 275, but I want it to slowly Climb the 275 with this rack of ribs on. Our ribs has a nice sweat to them, man. If you're in the smoke rings, you definitely want to have some moisture on your rack of ribs. This is such a large rack, man. Oh. All right, so you want to make sure your ribs are positioned the way you want them to cook, nice and straight. Then you want to push them in from the ends to thicken them up. It helps them to cook evenly. So in we go. And we probably won't be back out here for maybe another hour and a half uh, just to see where we are. All right, while our ribs are on, we're going to make a bit of a pork stock using some of the rib trimmings. These are the tips. I like using the bony areas, lots of cartilage. Lots of great flavor. To this stock, I'm going to add a decent chunk of onion. This is yellow onion. A couple of cloves of garlic. Some whole peppercorns. Three cups of water. And a nice shake of my body of complete season. <laughs> Are you seeing a theme here? <laughs> <laughs> Folks, this is three cups of liquid. I'm going to cook this down to maybe three quarters of a cup. So I want to slowly just concentrate these flavors. And this stock is going to become a part of our, our wrap juice and our glaze at the end of this cook. All right, we are at an hour and a half. We're still rocking that uh, 275 man. 
we're going to be looking at giving these just a, a 180. They're looking good. I'm beginning to see some liquid pooling. Man, these things are thick. Oh. All right, we're just going to let it continue rocking for probably another hour and a half or so. All right, it has been an hour. Let's see if we need to start a little spritzing, man. So we are at two and a half hours, and we're really starting to render on top. This rack was so well marbled, man. Uh, our bark is set. I've got just a little uh, vinegar and water in here. Not a whole lot. That color is looking great. We'll come back out here in another half hour and uh, it might be time to wrap. All right, folks, we are at three hours and 10 minutes. And I think we are going to wrap this big girl. I got my wool gloves on here. I've got my tray set up. Ooh. And we're gonna head to the table. Folks, I already have this uh, piece of foil doubled up because I know one piece would not get it done. So I've got them folded uh, just to create a wider sheet. So what I've got here is a hot pot of that stock that I created. I'm coming here with just about one ladle to help tenderize this massive rack. Nothing else. Wow, that's a large rack of ribs. All right, folks, and we're going to get this back to the pit. And we're going to continue rocking uh, probably another hour and a half before I come out here and check these. All right, so let's start working on our so-called glaze for the end. I've got a strainer in here. and just try to clean it up some. So folks, I'm gonna be mixing this savory porky stock with some Blues Hall Tennessee Red. Vinegar based, as opposed to tomato based. So I'm gonna start with half a cup of the Tennessee Red. And then I'm gonna start with a quarter cup of my stock. Oh, it smells good. Mm -hmm. So what I wanna do is just cook this down ahead to thicken up. I wish you guys could smell this. Mm. That is all I'm going to do, folks. All right, folks, we're at the five-hour mark, man. I like to wrap like this so I can open up and check. I've got a calibrated pinky. Mm. If I'm able to poke, and it feels like if I push hard enough, I could poke a hole in, uh, these are good to go. Uh, I do not want fall off the bone. If you're a fan of fall off the bone, you could let this go a little longer. But uh, I am not going to. Five hour mark. We are good to go. Put this on a tray and show you the next step. Nice and soft. I could poke a hole through here if. Oh. I didn't want to do that, but. That calibrated uh, pinky. Yeah, that pinky <laughs> tells me that this is good to go. So, what we're going to do now. I'm going to put this back on the pit before we glaze, but I want to take this awesome juice right here, man. We're going to create another layer of flavor on this rack. I'm going to put this back on the pit, allow it to dry out before I glaze. You've never seen anything like this unless you've taken uh, our comp class back in the days. I've got my wool gloves under here, and man, uh, when you remove that membrane, that end bone on the thick side is always, always at risk. All right, so back on the pit, we're going to give that about 10 minutes to dry out. We'll come back out here and glaze. All right, folks, it's been about 10 minutes, and man, we're nice and dry. All right, so we are definitely ready for a glaze. So we're gonna glaze on this pan. Let's remove, and we're gonna take it to the table. And here you can see right off the bat, folks, 
uh, no membrane, how our bones are a little exposed, whereas with the membranes, bones are fully intact. Here is our glaze. It's warm so that it flows. I don't want to waste a whole lot on the back side. I'm going to flip and do the same thing. Oh, these feel great. Now let's get these back on the pit. We're going to give these another good 10 minutes. Been about another 10 minutes, man. We're going to get this thing off of here. We're going to give this a couple of five minutes or so, man, before uh, we cut into it. All right, folks, so it's been about 10 minutes. We've given this the rest. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six bones with the membrane on and the others with the membrane off. So uh, let's just give this a once over and see. All right, so we've lost that bone, man. Look at that. Beautiful ring. Let's get right into some slicing and see if we can get this done without tearing anything up. Wow. I just can taste that. <laughs> mm. Wow. Mama, <laughs> you absolutely have to. <laughs> mm. It's simple. Mm. All right, folks, so here we are, membrane off. Nice and juicy, folks. I'm not going to squeeze anything. But all you got to do is look at that, and you can tell that is a rib that you want to enjoy. Membrane off. Okay. All right. I'm not squeezing for juice. I'm just squeezing for texture. And if I'm looking to, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So membrane on, and you can actually see it. All right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely no difference. Off on, off on. Absolutely no difference. Oh, I mean, this just comes off, membrane on, membrane off. Absolutely no difference. This is a delicious bite of rib. So tender. And I'm here to tell you, that Tennessee red mixed with that stock creates something that the average person has never tasted. You know, there's nothing wrong with Sweet Baby Ray's or your favorite barbecue sauce. But every once in a while, you got to shake things up. Try this. Let me know what you think. You're going to thank Papa Joe. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. An absolutely beautiful cook, man. Membrane on versus membrane off. No difference, in my opinion. No difference because you saw it. That Tennessee red mixed with that pork stock. Oh, my goodness. Something you absolutely need to try. Mom and I want to thank you guys and gals as usual for hanging out with us, man. We absolutely appreciate your support. Be on the lookout for another video coming very soon. In the meantime, we want you guys to love each other, take care of yourselves, and we'll see you when we see you. Holla!